Welcome to another Cosmos DB Design Patterns video. Uh, I'm Mark. And I'm Jasmine. And in this pattern, we're going to talk about uh, something called distributed counter. So what's a distributed counter? Well, let me explain what you'd use it for, maybe, and then you can understand, maybe. Uh, distributed counters are really helpful in scenarios where you have a lot of contention uh, for, say, a single resource, a single thing. Uh, we can express that as maybe uh, like a TV for like a like a Black Friday uh, sales event. Let's just say I'm a retailer. Uh, I have maybe a jungle type name or something like that. I can kind of say something like that. <laughs> and I come up with a 85 inch TV or a 100 inch TV and I want to sell it for 50 bucks. Uh, you can guess that there's going to be a fire sale on that, right, Jasmine? And people are going to want to buy that 100 inch TV for 50 bucks. So if I'm a retailer, what am I going to do to maintain that inventory? Because I don't want to oversell uh, those things, right? Like I'm going to have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people all at once trying to buy that television. And I need to maintain an accurate count of how many I got in stock. Well, in a kind of a normal scenario, you would have uh, maybe a single table or a single property or something uh, where you're maintaining that inventory value. And here's what the problem is, is that you're going to get high levels of contention uh, on that. And that's going to basically slow everyone down. So how do you do that? Well, you create this pattern here, which we call distributed counter. Uh, and basically, kind of distributed counter, the way this works is uh, you take and create individual documents within the container. Uh, and each one of those stores some value uh, that together aggregate to the total value for, say, all the TVs you've got within here. So how do we implement this? Well, let me walk through. There's a few different pieces in this. We have this counter class in here that we've defined. Uh, and within that, there's two different, or the counter project or library. Uh, within it, there's two classes. There's this counter management service. Uh, and what this does is this creates uh, the new counter objects that you've got within there and then manages it. Uh, there's also a cool feature in here called splitting and merging the counters because you can create multiple different counters in there, which is good when you need to scale this out, right? You, you create multiple different documents within here. Uh, you can count potentially more things and handle higher concurrency, higher contention within there. Uh, the other piece of this is the operational service. And that's the thing that's doing the decrementing uh, or reducing the inventory values uh, within here. Now, you can create all these separate documents. So how do you reduce what's kind of the key or the magic for reducing the contention? Uh, and what we did in here is we essentially randomized which document gets decremented within there. Uh, and then to get an aggregate of that, you basically just run a query. Uh, and within Cosmos, we have snapshot isolation within there. So you're not going to get a lock on there while you're taking a read of this thing. We just take a snapshot of it at that moment in time. Uh, and then you can get an aggregate value for how many TVs you've got left uh, over the life of this thing. And within the sample here, and I'll show you, uh, we just run that aggregate like every second in there and it gives you an updated uh, count for all the TVs we've got left. All right, so other things we've got in here, there's a little web app we've got. This is just a little tiny little ASP.NET Blazor application. Uh, and here you can see there's a distributed counter with the ID value in here. Uh, you can see how many are in display at the time, how many counters are active, and then the aggregate value for all those counters uh, at that time. I'll show you the split and merge feature in here. This is kind of a cool little feature we added into this thing here, but you can create or reduce the number of active counters you've got depending on how much contention, uh, how many TVs maybe you're trying to sell uh, at the same time. And then of course, we've got underneath here a little graph that shows you all the counters that are created. And then the value of each one of those counters as they go from <clears throat> whatever value you start with uh, all the way down to zero. And then lastly, there's a little consumer application. This is the app that's creating all the traffic, all the workload on it. So it's creating all of these events to decrement buying televisions within there. Uh, and then all of these work basically on multiple different threads. They're all calling that counter service in there. Give me a TV, give me a TV, give me a TV. Uh, and then that reduces uh, the inventory value for each of these separate counters within there. And then, of course, an aggregate for all of them in total. Uh, so run through a little bit more in here. Uh, all of the samples you have uh, or that we have within here, uh, you can run them locally on your machine. So you can go and just clone this thing. Uh, but we also have code spaces enabled on here as well. Uh, and for this and all the others, uh, we're going to show this thing uh, in a GitHub code space. 
More instructions below on how you set this up. You want to put some URIs and secrets uh, in here uh, for both of the different projects. Uh, do some upsetting or uh, app setting update in here. Uh, actually, we'll take that out, make that even easier for you when you get to run this thing. Uh, and then just to run it, we go and fire up our visualizer app. We'll create a new counter. Uh, we'll put that value inside our consumer app. Uh, and then we're going to start running this thing. So uh, let's get to it. I'm going to go and open up a code space I've got right here. Uh, and I've got two terminals open in here. And let me just show you. Here's the project. So I've got my consumer app. This is the thing that's going to go and create a bunch of load on this thing. Uh, and then here's my little Blazor app right here. That's going to show uh, those distributed counters all working in action right here. So here's my visualizer app. Let me go. I'm going to go .NET run this thing. And we'll give code space here just a second. It's going to fire up our little website. Mind. What's that? This is my favorite uh, design pattern out of this one. I just love it's like the visualization is like really, really neat. Yeah, and really easy too, right? So, uh, okay, here we go. We got our counter. So we're going to start with an initial value. So I got a thousand televisions to sale. So not too many. Uh, this is going to create a lot of uh, upset people probably because they're going to say, oh, I got to get a hundred inch television for 50 bucks and then they're all going to be gone. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, let me go. I'm going to create this counter right here. Uh, this is going to put us on our new page here. So we've got our chart down here, and this thing is just running every second. So you can see the seconds are clicking by here on the bottom. Uh, next, I want to take and I'm going to copy my value right here. I'm going to go back into my code space. Now I'm going to go to a different terminal, and this is set up for my consumer app. So let's go and we're going to .NET run this guy right here. And it's going to ask me, what is the counter ID? Uh, that we're going to run, and I'm going to just paste that into here, uh, and then I'm going to run it. And how many threads? So basically, how many instances of my app am I going to run and handle all of these people wanting to buy televisions? Uh, we'll just start with four here so we can watch this thing go. And there they go. So now you see this thing's off and running. Let's go back to our web app, and here you can see so I've got four different threads. They're all running this decrement function on here. TVs are selling fast, selling fast. Uh, let's just say maybe I want to create more counters. I got more people coming in here and I need to handle that load. So I'm going to split some of these counters uh, within here. And here you can see it changes the graph that happens within here. Uh, oh, that doesn't do much. Let's split two counters within here and watch what happens within here. See, so I created some new counters in here. They all got values in here. Right, uh, let's go ahead and say merge. So I wanna reduce the number of workers I've got going in here. That should result in some of these getting incremental value or more value, right? Because I took individual counters and now I've added them and made them run into, uh, into new counters here. These things are quickly going to zero here, uh, but you can see the aggregate value every second going down and down and down. Let's maybe split one more time here. And that thing should be just near to zero. I don't know why that, I don't know what's going on with this guy over here, but he's still got some TVs left. Uh, but there you can see my aggregate value is now down to zero. And I've successfully been able to handle a ton of contention for all of these great TVs that I sold uh, mistakenly for 50 bucks. Uh, so I'll probably lose my job because we probably lost a ton of money on that, Jasmine, but that's okay. Uh, I was able to accurately count the number of TVs and not get into an oversold situation uh, and then have all my customer service people have to deal with uh, uh, all the badness of that. So let's look at a couple of things in here. I wanted to show you, this is the container where I've got these things. So what does each of these things look like? Well, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. It's just ID and partition key uh, uh, in here. So I've got an ID, sorry, this is the partition key. This would have been, uh, the, not the value for that. Oh, that's a different one in here, but I'm creating a new counter. That's going to be my partition key. And then each of the individual counters within there uh, is going to get its own ID. Uh, status one here is it's active. Uh, and then the counter value, this is an older one here that didn't run all the way. So it still has some values in here. So but there you can kind of see each of these documents is its own individual distributed counter. And then using this basically kind of a random function I want to sell a TV, go and hit one of these random documents within here, run a patch operation. So this is another cool feature in Cosmos. You don't have to run a full replace. You can actually do a, a JSON patch within here that just does the update 
for that value in there and then decrements it uh, by the value that we want to uh, we want to reduce the inventory in here. So that's the that's the uh, the distributed counter um, pattern within here. Uh, we really think this is a valuable pattern for people. I mean, know a lot of people use Cosmos uh, to build kind of these high volume uh, applications. And this is a very, I think, valuable way to be able to deal with this and then take advantage of what Cosmos is really good at, which is really handling these high scale, high throughput uh, scenarios uh, for these types of workloads. So what do you think, Jasmine? Think it's cool? Should we get some TVs and try this? Yeah, yeah, I think um, we we'll definitely have to increase inventory for sure. Um, yeah, and maybe have it at a higher price too, so I don't lose my job. So. <laughs> all right, well, folks, we hope you enjoyed this pattern. Uh, come check out this pattern and all the other patterns, uh, and we'll have more of these videos for you too. So thanks for joining.